Pick. That's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about none other than Rick James. Rick James had a song uh, that he did that he that he used to introduce Eddie Murphy or uh, that brought Eddie Murphy into the musical aspect of entertainment. He was already a comedian working on Saturday Night Live. He had not blown up as he had after he did all the movies. So he did a collaboration with Rick James. He came to East Aurora, New York. Rick James wrote this song, produced it, and while they was writing and producing, guess what they was doing? Just like the song said, they potted all the time. I used to do that in the flesh, but now I'm doing it by way of the Holy Ghost. And when you do a Holy Ghost party, a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Amen. If I was able to have all that zeal, uh huh, to jump and jack and, and whatever else. In the name of having fun, I ought to be able to do it from the my Lord, my God. Why? Because he has done some amazing things for me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul. I don't know what your soul does. Because you know why? I don't know what you come to do. 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 I come to praise the Lord. I come to praise the Lord. I come to lift him up. I come to lift him up. Well, I don't know what you come to do. 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 I come to hear the word. I come to hear the word. I come to sing my song. I come to sing my song. Well, I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Amen. Amen. We come to lift up the name of Jesus. Now, 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 let me tell you, we're going to do intro, Sound Alarm Ministries. You've heard the scripture for our ministry is being the foundation of Joel 2.1. Let us look to the word of God. And while we do that, I'm going to ask my wife, amen, the anointing oil, man, <coughs> just do that. Uh, I'm going to get to the scripture as well, but um, we got to consecrate ourselves in the interim. We've done that early in the day, but now we had a whole new uh, uh, a time frame. And that, that what he anointed with me earlier, that's gone. Amen. We need a, you always need a fresh anointing. Uh-huh. Um, Some people try to live off of yesterday's anointing. I don't know what makes you think you can live off of something that should have been expended yesterday. Why are you saying that? Mm -hmm. Amen. Why am I saying it should have been expended yesterday? Well, this is what the Bible says. That there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. No one knows when that time will come for us. We just know it's going to come. So how can you be concerned about what you're going to be able to do tomorrow? Well, you know, I ain't going to do nothing right now, but I got time. I'll do it tomorrow. Let me tell you something. There's a story in the Bible about a man, a rich man. He owned a farm. He had, he had a lot of stuff in, in his barn. And he looked out in his barn and said, you know what? what I got so much that I need to bigger build build a bigger bar and while he said that the Bible says that the that the spirit of the living God said to him you fool this night your soul is required of you so what happened he didn't even get a chance to enjoy he didn't first off he didn't get a chance to build a bigger bar but he didn't get a chance to even enjoy that which he was hoping to do. So what am I saying? Anytime God gives you a work to do, anytime God gives you anointing because you get it in the morning, morning by morning new mercies you get, you're supposed to work while the day is still day. Tomorrow, don't know what's going to happen. It ain't promised to you. The very second, right now, my talking right now, anything comes after what I'm saying right now, God could stop him. If he says it's time up for me, while I'm talking, y'all, it could be all over. So therefore, you got to have a fresh anointing. You need to have a new anointing. No, you don't get the Holy Ghost all over again. He comes in and indwells you. Then he seals himself into you. Oh, man, amen. Um, Joel 2.1. This is what it says in the Amplified Bible. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy Mount Zion. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the judgment of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. Now, why is it saying this? Oh, God, let me stop right there. Father God, before I go any further, I'm getting, I'm, we really into it, y'all. Um, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I humbly beseech you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I invoke your presence, Father God, in this place, in the name of Jesus Christ. Sanctify it, 
Father God, make it hallowed ground. So, Father God, that in your presence, the Bible says there's liberty. In your presence, there is healing. And, Father God, we, are, we, we may only be two right here, but the Bible says where two or three are gathered in your name, you are God in the midst. And there are people that are listening on the sound of my voice. They are not in Delaware. Some are in Illinois. Some are in Georgia. Some are in Mississippi. Some are in foreign lands. So, therefore, Father God, let your spirit, be invoked wherever your people are. For where they are, you are. And where you are, they are. Father God, forgive me for all sins, the trespasses, the deeds, a, a wrong, a thought, a word that I may have done since the last time I spoke to you. It was not pleasing in your sight, so I ask for forgiveness. And before I go any further, Father God, I want to pray for your people. Open up their hearts, minds, and understanding so they can hear what the Spirit is saying to each and every one of them. Father God, don't let them just sit there and just get all excited and hear what we're saying. They need to more. They do me. Mm -mm -mm. They need to be more than just excited. They need to more than just hear. For the Bible lets me know that we need to not only be hearers of this word, but we must become doers of it as well. And Father God, as I go forth as this vessel that you've chosen, that you've entrusted to do what thus saith the Lord, I know that I, Arthur, must decrease and you the Lord my God must increase and I'm extremely mindful to say that I want the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight O Lord my strength and redeemer in the precious name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I pray with thanksgiving in my heart amen 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 what we're doing right here is we're we're just doing it. Many people have known us. They've heard about us. You've seen us. But we're going to reiterate. We're going to bring back to your remembrance about Sound the Alarm. Because right now, God is doing a new thing in the earth. He is reintroducing Sound the Alarm ministry. Many of you may have seen a post on my Facebook page. Oh my God, we praise God. We honor God. We thank God for the work that he's done. Look what the Lord has done. He has taken Sound Alarm Ministry that was established on December the 12th, 2015 and has allowed us to be exposed to where we are reaching the masses. We are a global ministry. Why? Because the mantle of God that he's placed upon us. Are we special? Not, not more so than anybody else that he's done this for. We ain't Elijah. We ain't crazy enough to think that we're the only ones. But we do know this. The calling that he has for us is us. Calling he has for somebody else to you, that's you. And what you need to do is do your thing according to the Lord. We're going to do ours. Now, this is what God has told us. Joel 2.1, the scripture foundation. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Do you know what Zion represents? Many know, and, and when you understand and you know the Bible, when we're in the Old Testament, Zion is a city, y'all, in old Jerusalem, in, in Israel. And, and, and it's associated with the Israel, with the Jew, with, with uh with the Jewish people, with the Hebrews. But when you translate and, and juxtapose what God is saying in the Old and bring it to the New Testament, Zion has a representation. Just like there were type figures of Christ, Zion is a type figure today of the church. Oh yeah, the church? Am I talking about Sound the Alarm Ministries? No. Am I talking about uh, 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 True Bethel Baptist Church in the city of Buffalo, New York? No. Am I talking about Maine Baptist in Aurora, Illinois? No. That's a place of worship. The church is the each and every individual believer in Jesus Christ. So he says, sound the trumpet in Zion to my people. Oh my God, I'm almost there. And he said, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Oh, God says that we need to be trembling. Why is he saying that? For the day of the judgment of the Lord is coming. It is close as hand. What do we need to be concerned about judgment? When, when we're supposed to go and see God, we're supposed to stand before Jesus, we're going to receive our crown and reward. Oh, you better slow your roll. You better slow your roll. He says he's coming back here for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. What situation are we in? We go to, we go to Isaiah 58 and 1. Watch this now, y'all. And then I'm going to go somewhere else. Cry aloud, spare not. Thus the motto, we are crying loud and sparing not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. That's going back to Joel 2.1. And declare to my people their transgression. And to the house of Jacob their sins. 
When it says like a, to my people, he are talking about his chosen people, the peculiar people, the born again believer in Christ, the Christians, you and I. God is saying uh, 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 that, listen, I said in my word that I'm coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. I am soon to come. And why he said with such sense of urgency? Oh, I not, it ain't none of y'all on here, but there's many people that grew up uh, under, this here, under this here philosophy. Uh, the end times is at hand. God is soon. God is coming back. They and I've heard people. It's been decades. They've been in church. They've heard preachers say the same thing, and they think that that means that God is wrong. That there's a lie about whether or not He's coming back quick. The Word of God, and I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna go back to. I gotta go back to Joel. I gotta go back to Joel. I gotta go back to Joel. Amen. Cause I gotta go somewhere after that. I gotta go back to Joel. Uh huh. Joel two one. Uh huh. Where are me? Okay. Joel 2.1, Arthur, go back to Joel 2.1, and it says this, blow the trumpet in Zion, I, it's the latter part that I want to get to, but I don't want to get there before I, I say it before, sound an alarm in my holy mouth Zion, that all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the judgment of the Lord is coming, it is close at hand. Now, when the preachers say, and they've been saying for decades that God is soon to return, many people, because we're leaning to our, our intellect, we said, well, I've been, in, I've been in saved for 40, 50 years. He ain't came back yet. What do you mean he's soon to come? Let me help you understand it. According to the word of God, a day unto the Lord is as a thousand years. One day to the Lord is as a thousand years. Now, why is that significant? And why am I saying as unto the Lord? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm back in Isaiah. I'm bouncing back and forth here, y'all, because that's where the Holy Ghost is leading me. We're doing what we call line upon line, precept upon precept. And what that means, at any time that you teach the Word of God, any time that you try to convey the Word of God to somebody, or any time that you want to set your belief on the Word of God, don't just take one scripture and go, oh my God, watch this, sis. Uh, go boogity, 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 and running with it. What you need to do is go line upon line and precept upon precept so you can get the whole meaning of what God is saying in his word. Watch what God says in his word as found in Isaiah 55 and 8. And then I'm going to take you somewhere else. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Oh yeah, everything's from the Amplified Bible. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Now why would God make that distinction? We were created in his image, in the image and likeness of God where we created it. But God still says, I'm God, you're not. You don't think like I think, that's why you're not God. And to help our understanding, watch this. Let us go. I'm coming back to Isaiah 55, but I got to go somewhere first. Let's go to Numbers. The 23rd chapter of Numbers and the 19th verse. Watch this why God's our thoughts and our ways are not like God. This is the word of God, y'all. It's irrefutable. If I gave you authorism and stood up here and gave you some nice sounding anecdotes, and I'm sure there's somebody that might have checked in and saw us doing what we were doing, they probably thought they was going, oh, yeah, they about ready to show out. Yeah, in the word I am, Numbers 23, 19 says this, God is not a man that he should tell or act a lie. Neither the son of man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Now I'm going to go and expound on verse on what I just read in your hearing and make sure that we understand what the scriptures are saying. God is not a man. He's not a man. That he should tell. Not, now, now watch this. Tell or act a lie. I submit to you. Lying is lying. It ain't no difference. A little lie, small lie, in between lie. A lie is a lie, and it is sin. But I'm going to tell you something. And this, I'm just going to give you this by way of Arthur. Uh, amen. I think, to me, the worst kind of lying you can do is not tell it, but act a lie. That's the worst kind of lying you can do. You know why? Because, watch this. There's a parable in the Bible. There's a parable in the Bible, story of a parable in the Bible. Jesus and his disciples were ministering. They were coming. And Jesus, 
Now they've been working. They've been doing a hard work. So they were probably hungry. Jesus saw from afar off.